Good Sunday morning and welcome to WGN TV Political Report. I'm Paul Lisnick. The final countdown to primary election day is on. With just nine days until votes are counted, candidates up and down the ballot are looking to shore up support from voters statewide. Now this morning, we're taking you inside the heated Democratic primary for Illinois Secretary of State. Four candidates are vying for their party's nomination in the hopes of taking the reins from Jesse White, who's retiring after nearly 25 years on the job. The field includes former Illinois Treasurer Alexi Janulius, City Clerk Anna Valencia, Chicago Alderman David Moore, and self described entrepreneur Sidney Moore. Valencia and Janulius are largely seen as the front runners in the race, both with big money, big name endorsements behind them, but the pair both come with some political baggage. Valencia, first appointed city clerk in 2017, has faced questions about her use of official email to help her lobbyist husband. She's denied wrongdoing, but admits she should have been more careful. Janulius first served as an Illinois state treasurer at the age 30, the youngest person to hold that job nationwide. He lost a race for U.S. Senate against Mark Kirk in 2010. And I I spoke with Janulius about his record and the race ahead. Take a listen. Alexi, thanks for joining me. Appreciate that. You are a lifelong Chicagoan, although you went to school in Boston and New Orleans, but uh, banking background, youngest, secre uh, youngest state treasurer, ran for Senate. Why Secretary of State right now? What's propelling that? Well, first of all, it's great to see you again. Thanks for, uh, for having me. And, you know, when Secretary White told me that he wasn't running again, I thought it would be great to have someone who's actually held statewide office. Uh, someone who has some private sector uh, experience, someone who understands uh, the importance of bringing new efficiencies, modernization. Uh, I started looking at this, this fight for voting rights, which I think is the biggest challenge that our democracy has seen in a very long time, and just bring those same efficiencies uh, and innovative ideas that we brought to the state treasurer's office uh, to the secretary of state's office. You call yourself an independent Democrat, but you've been endorsed by the Cook County Dems, a lot of the county Democratic parties. So how do you stay independent? Won't people expect return? Uh, well, I've always been independent, as, as you know, because you covered my state treasurer's race. I ran against the, the party. I've always just believed in good government. We need the right people involved. And my theory is if people are willing to work hard, if they care about public service, um, those are the only people that are going to be a part of my team. That's the track record that I built, um, and that will always be the case. Well, you mentioned Secretary White, so I just out of curiosity, we'll talk about his work, but he told you about it, that he was retiring, but he did endorse your opponent. What's your reaction to that? Well, I, I, I couldn't be more proud of, of the endorsements we've gotten from people like Congressman Chuy Garcia, Congressman Robin Kelly, Mike Quigley, you know, every newspaper uh, that made an endorsement has endorsed our campaign. Um, that, uh, to me, is a testament to the campaign we run. That's why uh, we're up in the polls, but we're not taking anything uh, for granted. So your website, your plan has a lot of modernization to it, which makes me think, you know, Jesse White certainly has modernized things. We can buy our state sticker online and various things. What <clears throat> what hasn't he done that you think he, he should have done or could have done over time that you'll step in to do? Well, I think in general, COVID, you know, has taught us that um, things work differently and we have to uh, modernize the way that we do everything in that office and in state government. And I think people are going through too much uh, just to access simple government services. And what people are doing is paying what, what we call the time tax. We want to eliminate the time tax. So we've talked about a skip the line program where we actually schedule an appointment in the Secretary of State's office, putting people's driver's license and IDs uh, on their mobile device, um, the creation of an app. Uh, we're, even, we're even looking at vision tests online, secure, unhackable. You know, we believe that we can cut foot traffic by 50 to 70 percent at our DMVs and focus on, uh, you know, business administration, uh, helping people start their first business, expand their business, because we're also in charge of corporate registration and business formation. So uh, modernization and new technology will be at the forefront of everything we do. So many of the ads in this campaign are dealing with issues like people's view on abortion, your view on abortion, and your opponent's view on abortion. And I watch these things, and I'm like, what does that have to do with Secretary of State? Uh, well, I agree. Uh, but look, we, we've been talking about modernization. We've been talking about the fight for voting rights. We've been talking about uh, bringing ethics back to state government. Uh, my opponent has uh, put together an ad which every good government group, every newspaper, uh, every media outlet said is an outright lie. You know, that's politics. You can say whatever you want, put it on TV. I happen to be pro-choice. And I do think, by the way, what's happening in our country on a lot of very important issues uh, is scary and dangerous, and we need people to step up and run for office. But that ad is offensively and a dangerous lie, and I think my opponent knows it. And quite frankly, 
and that's what people are sick and tired of in politics. So given the fact that we've seen these kinds of ads, um, and I know we're in the primary, not the general, but it, you get through to the general, what would you say to Republicans at that point, you know, who look and say, you know, I'm so tired of the fighting on the Democrat side among the Democrats because the Republicans recently had a debate and they, you know, there's no fighting with each other. What would you say if somebody says it's time for a Republican to take an open seat? Well, first of all, I have to make it out of the primary. Yeah. And second of all, I, I'm not fighting with anyone. I've been talking about ideas. We've put together policy proposals from day one, on social justice issues, modernization, ethics, uh, making sure people aren't waiting in line at the, at the DMV. Our proposals have gotten us the endorsements we've gotten. Every newspaper, the Chicago Tribune, the Daily Herald, good government groups are behind us, over 250 elected officials and organizations. Uh, so I, I continue to talk about policy. I think I've got opponents who are you know, down in the polls and feel the need to attack. Um, we're responding, but I'm not, I'm not doing this because I want to fight with people. I'm doing it because I want to help people have better lives, and I want to reduce the time tax that people are paying. In the world of voting, as you know, Secretary of State in this, in this state uh, doesn't have a lot to do with elections, but you have called for increasing registration by adding a back-end system to the front-end system. Explain that for people who don't get it. Uh, yeah, so the Secretary of State's responsible for automatic voter registration. And what we've looked at, again, we're the only campaign to talk about these issues, is um, taking that system to one where people are asked to opt out uh, when they get their license or ID um, at the DMV versus what we want to implement, which is they get their driver's license or ID, they're automatically in, uh, registered to vote, they get a piece of mail to their house a few weeks later, they have to proactively opt out. What we've seen in the states that do it that way, uh, registration increases by anywhere from 20 to 30 percent. We want to do everything we can to encourage as many people as possible to vote. And I will tell you, looking at some of these laws and some of these bills across the country that are being passed to disenfranchise voters, we're seeing these uh, bogus claims of, of uh, election fraud. Um, it's, it's scary times for our democracy. The more people the vo that vote, the better. And I will do everything, my can everything I can as Secretary of State to make it as easy as possible for people to vote. Part of that plan is you talk about pre-registering teens at 16 and 17 so they're ready to go when they're 18. But again, what would you say to those in the state who have concerns about election, in election integrity and say that might raise questions? Well, there's never been, you know, any, any claim of uh, election, in, uh, lack of election integrity or voter fraud. You know, in the last 30 years, out of the four or five billion votes cast, whatever the number is, there's only been about 30 claims of, of uh, voter fraud that have ever been proven to have anything that resemble the truth. And I will tell you, we're working with Senator Ron Villivalum on a bill to just pre-register 16 and 17 year olds so that when they do turn 18, they're out automatically out registered to vote. Again, more people need to be engaged in the political process. More people need to watch your show uh, and, and understand what's really at stake. Get to know uh, the candidates. And again, every almost every group that we've been in front of, we've received the endorsement because we talk about public policy, because we talk about how we're going to make the office uh, more efficient. And quite frankly, being the only candidate who's held statewide office before, that experience is something that is meaningful. So your website talks a lot about plans when it comes to, to uh, library, Illinois State Library, which your office would run, road safety, organ donors, distracted driving. What is your priority on day one if you're a Secretary of State? Uh, modernization. Uh, fixing automatic voter registration and making sure we have the best library system uh, in the country. But the first thing that I'm going to do, which is the exact same thing I did as state treasurer, on my first day in office, we're going to pass the most wide-ranging, comprehensive uh, ethics package so that there will never even be a cent of pay-to-play politics in the Secretary of State's office. And especially because this is the office that oversees lobbyist registrations and reports, we need to make sure that we send a message on day one. And finally, many have used the Secretary of State's office as kind of a stepping stone for other jobs. You were treasurer, state treasurer, tried for Senate. So what about people who say, well, he wants to be state, uh, Secretary of State, but he's looking for government. He's looking for something else. Well, those people haven't talked to my wife. <laughs> I, I'm not using this as a, a stepping stone. I believe in public service. I think now more than ever, we need people from the private sector who are willing to step up and lead and play a role in moving this country forward. I have two little girls that I care deeply about and I want to do play at least some small role in making the world a better place for them. I know it sounds uh, cheesy and idealistic, but that's the only reason I'm running.